Good morning, grade one S students. I hope you are doing well. Today, I'm going to finish this chapter. Please open your books, page 18 on activity three, chemical elements of plant living matter. The objective of this video is to verify the chemical elements of plant matter by applying several techniques. It is known that green plants take water, minerals, carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight to produce oxygen and the organic matter. Hence, the plant must be constituted of elements coming from these nutrients. Qualitative analysis of plant living matter shows that it is composed of water, mineral salts, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and the organic, and the organic carbon compounds. The latter, which are peculiar characteristic of living things, are classified into three major groups, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. What are the chemical elements of the plant matter? The main chemical elements of the plant matter are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. As we studied in activity three, the carbon is obtained from the absorbed carbon dioxide while hydrogen and oxygen are obtained from water, H2O. However, nitrogen is mainly obtained from the absorbed mineral salts. Water, or H2O, is made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen. In order to verify the presence of water in green plants, we put in a test tube two leaves and heat it. After some minutes, we notice the presence of water droplets. Thus, the plant is composed of water. Exactly 80% of the plant's matter is water. Due to photosynthesis, some of the water molecules split into hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, the two chemical elements constituting the organic matter are hydrogen and oxygen. We can also verify the presence of carbon and mineral salts by a technique called calcination or combustion. This technique depends on heating substances to high temperature in air or oxygen. Some of the substances such as carbon can be combusted. In other words, carbon is able to react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. However, other substances such as mineral salts are non-combustible which means that they cannot react with oxygen. As a result, they form ash. Look in document A. Let's observe the calcination of the pine needles at time one minute, five minutes, and 20 minutes. After one minute of calcination, the pine needles remain green. However, after five minutes, the pine needles become black, indicating the presence of carbon. Moreover, after 20 minutes, we observe ash, which indicates the presence of non-combustible mineral salts. Hence, the chemical elements constituting the organic matter are carbon and mineral salts, such as sodium, potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen, etc. Another simple experiment using lime water can be done to test the presence of carbon in plants. In general, when lime water reacts with carbon dioxide, it turns milky and turbid. So when the leaves of the plant are heated, carbon dioxide is released, which in turn enters the second tube, reacts with lime water, and turns turbid. Thus, carbon is found in plants. Verifying the presence of nitrogen. Nitrogen is a necessary element needed for the formation of proteins. If we can verify that the plant contains the nitrogen molecule, then we can say that the plant has proteins and the opposite is true. In a test tube, add some samples of the plant with caustic soda, also known as sodium hydroxide and AOH. The aim of using sodium hydroxide is to decompose the proteins if present in plants. It is hypothesized that following the decomposition of protein and upon heating the nitrogen can be released in the form of ammonia gas, NH3. NH3 is a weak base. So to test its presence, we can use a wet litmus paper which indicates the chemical medium, acidic, basic, or neutral. 
If the litmus paper turns blue, then the chemical medium is basic, which is the case here because NH3 is a base. In addition to this technique, we can observe the reaction form between NH3 gas and HCl. Hence, a rod dipped in HCl approaches the top of the test tube. NH3 reacts with HCl to produce white fumes of ammonium chloride, NH4Cl. So the white fumes indicate for sure the presence of nitrogen, which is at the origin of NH3 gas. As a conclusion from the previous experiments, the major elements needed for the synthesis of the organic matter, protein, lipid, and carbohydrate are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All the organic matter are composed of these three. However, proteins contain additionally nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Moreover, minerals can be divided into two major groups, macroelements and microelements. Macroelements are needed in big quantities such as nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium, etc., while microelements are needed in smaller quantities such as iron, zinc, and chloride. Today's session is finished. Please, I want you to copy this conclusion on your copybook and memorize it. Thank you and see you soon.